Well, I'm going to do something which I uh, just wonder how you will take it, but um, Hebrews chapter 11, I was reading this the other day and I've read it I don't know how many times in my life. You know, you, you know it, Beryl, you know it, you don't need to, but you can get by if you want to, but I'm sure you will know it. Hebrews chapter 11, and it just struck me in the way I'm going to pass on to you. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, it was verses um, 11 and 12. It's about Sarah and Abraham. You know, you know this very well. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Ah, now that's, that's interesting. Um, my version I use at home gives this as a footnote with the possibility that it's Sarah. I think the authorizer's probably got Abraham there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, my version's got Abraham, but it's got Sarah as a footnote possibility as a, a manuscript. I don't know what you've got. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. I, I, I tend to think it actually is Sarah from what follows, but we'll see. Um, that's a bit of discussion about that. Um, since she considered him faithful who had promised, therefore also there was born of one man, and him as good as dead at that, although that goes more back to Abraham, as many descendants as the stars of heaven in number and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Now, I, I'm very firm, like Malcolm was saying last week, that things should be taken in context in Scripture. It's never so easy just to grab a verse out and run away with it. I hope I'm not doing that here. I think this passage is written anyway to encourage us, is it not, in faith. These people are giving these examples to us, not simply telling us how wonderful they were, but it is there for us to be encouraged, rebuked, whatever word you want, to stir us up. And this is how it struck me. Um, here are these two old people. Well, that fits me. And you could say that they're over the hill and it's the future's behind them, you know, it's all past and gone. But through faith, through faith, God did something through this couple that is a most remarkable um, miracle. It, it, in a sense, I mean, Isaac was born well, okay. But then what followed from Isaac, you know, the nation of Israel? And then you let your mind just run for a few seconds on that and you think, you know, Moses, the Exodus, think of that. Uh, Sinai, the covenant, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, uh, David's kingdom, you know, Solomon. And it goes on and on and on. And we go into the New Testament, the birth of Christ. So it's amazing what a huge oak came from this little acorn. And then when we bear in mind what uh, the New Testament makes of this with the spiritual uh, consequences, the l countless numbers of <coughs> believers. Well, this is how it struck me. Uh, um, I'm not unique, I know, but I, I have been trying to serve God now for 60 years or more, um, with meager success, I might say, um, seems to me. And it would be altogether too easy, wouldn't it, just to sort of throw the towel in and begin to drift and just let things, you know, slide. But I felt myself, I don't know whether the word is rebuked, I certainly felt encouraged, uh, challenged by it. One never knows what God may bring out, even from people who are past it. After all, we are told in Psalm 92, God's people will still bear fruit in old age. And a spiritual sense, I'm not Abraham, I'm not Sarah, nor are you, but 
I come into that text, Psalm 92, verse 14, and there are other texts too, end of Galatians chapter 6, uh, the, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, promises that if we don't give up, if we don't faint, we shall reap. What I'm trying to say is I felt that Abraham and Sarah challenged me, encouraged me to think not to give up, but to keep pressing on because one never knows. <laughs> one never knows what God may bring out of something which is seemingly in itself useless or on the edge of uselessness. I just passed it on to you whether it's worth anything to you or not, but it is easy just to say, well, it's, we can't expect anything now, but you never know. So keep doing whatever it is you do for God, praying, writing, uh, preaching, whatever it is, whatever, you, whatever God is laid upon your heart and what you do for him because you never know. I think this is left in God's word to challenge us in this way anyway.